Ladies and gentlemen, we're about to begin the last section of chapter four. Um, it'd be good to spend several days on this, but the truth is we're running out of time, so we need to cram it in one day. Um, by the end of this lesson, you'll be able to graph and solve quadratic inequalities. How are you going to get there? Well, you need to be able to solve quadratic equations. Now, we know how to solve quadratic equations because you guys know the quadratic formula. Or you could factor, split, and solve. You also need to apply knowledge of inequalities to determine, by the way, I misspelled determine. That's ridiculous. Determine uh, if your graph is solid or dotted. Okay? Um, and you also need to know how to shade when graphing by testing a point. So let's jump right into this. Let's look at that linear inequality that we need to graph. It's on the top left part of your handout right now. Um, this is in y equals mx plus b form. So it does cross at the b value of 1. And I do drop 2 and go over 3. Again, because the slope is negative, you're going to go down 2 over 3 this way. And you'll get to that dot right there. And using that pattern of down 2 over 3, but backwards, over 3 up 2, over 3 up 2, you get to that coordinate right there. Are you with me? Now, this is from Algebra 1. Do you guys remember what we do? Do we draw a straight line or a dotted line? Dotted. dotted. How do you know? The inequality has no line underneath it. If it had a line underneath it, if it had a solid line, it would be a solid line. But because there's no solid line underneath it, it will be a dotted line. So everybody do a dotted line right through there. And then the final touch, the finishing touch, is to shade in because that's where your answers are truly at. So are your answers down here on this side of that red dotted line or up here above that red dotted line. And for the sake of uh, relating it to the lesson today, let's actually test the origin 0, 0, which is clearly below. But if I test the coordinate 0, comma 0, that means I'm going to plug in 0 for x. This is going to be a 0. And 0 for y, that's going to be a 0. What's it going to say? It's going to say 0 is less than 1. Is that true or false? True, so this point does work, which means all the points down here work. They're all answers, so you would shade in the bottom. So keep that in mind. We're going to test a coordinate to see where our answers are at. Our answers are either going to be on one side of the graph or on the other side of the graph. It's time for today's section, graphing inequalities, quadratic inequalities. It's the same exact thing, right? Uh, you pretend it's an equation and you graph it, but then before actually graphing your parabola, you decide if it's solid or dotted. And then you have to test a point to shade. So how do we start graphing this? If it were an equation, how would I start graphing it? Well, this is a quadratic, though. It's not a linear anymore, which means we need to find the vertex. Do you guys remember that? Mm -hmm. How do we find the vertex? Negative, negative yep. And when we use the formula, we're going to use parentheses when we plug in our values. And of course, the b value is 2. The c value is negative 3. The a value is 1. So we plug in the 2 right there, the 1 right there. We end up with negative 2 over 2, which is negative 1. Ladies and gentlemen, that is our x value. Our vertex x value is negative 1. How do I find the y value? Plug it back in, right? Now, again, we're pretending it's an equation. We're pretending it says y equals instead of y is greater than. Bless you. But anyways, let's plug it in. And we're plugging in that x value of negative 1 that we found with the formula. And we do the math. Negative 1 squared is 1. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Minus 3 at the end. That will be negative 4. Agree? OK, so the y value is negative 4. That's our vertex, negative 1, negative 4. That's the most important point, guys, of a parabola. Let's graph it. Negative 1 on the x, negative 4 on the y. Put a dot right there. You're going to draw your axis of symmetry right through it. And now we need more points. What's the a value on this quadratic? One. one. So because the a value is 1, we're able to use the pattern 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9. So that's actually from the vertex. We know it's opening up because the a value is positive 1. So you're going to go 1 over 1 up and put a dot right there. Then you're going to go back to the vertex and go 2 over 4 up and put a dot right there. Then you're going to go back to the vertex and go 3 over 9 up, which will be right on the edge. Now, because of that axis symmetry, you're able to map it over to the other side. Put a dot right here, a dot right there, a dot right there. Now, before drawing our parabola, is this going to be a solid parabola, parabola or a dotted parabola? Dotted. dotted, because the inequality does not have a solid line underneath it. So it will be dotted. Everybody do a dotted parabola right through those coordinates. Now, remember, an inequality, it's not just a line. It's not just a parabola that's solid or dotted. It's a whole area. 
So your answers are either going to be on the inside of this U-shaped curve or on the outside of this U-shaped curve. So how do we do that? How do we figure out where our answers are at? Test the point. Test the point. Zero, zero is a very good, easy point to pick. I'm going to put a yellow dot right where the origin's at, and I'm going to test zero for x, zero for y. That means right here, instead of it saying y, I'm going to put a zero right there. So I'm going to put zero, and it's going to say it's greater than. Now, if I plug in a zero for the x's, it's going to all cancel out except the minus 3. So it will say 0 is greater than negative 3. Guys, what do you think about that? Is 0 greater than negative 3? Yeah. Yes, it is. So what does that tell you about that yellow dot? It works. It's good. It's an answer. That means that all of our answers are on this side, which is on the inside of the U-shaped curve. They're either going to be on the inside or the outside. All of these answers are on the inside. And I'm going to uh, highlight the inside representing all of our answers in yellow. So yes, all the answers on the inside work. If I pick any coordinate in here, it'll be a true statement. If I were to plug in, plug in the coordinate 0, 3, it'll work. If I plug in negative 1, 3, it'll work. If I plug in negative 2, 0, it'll work. All the solutions are on the inside of this parabola. That's pretty straightforward, right? So that's one task that you need to be able to do, be able to graph uh, quadratic inequalities. Now, we're also going to have to solve quadratic inequalities that don't have a y, kind of like this guy right here. If I told you to solve this, well, there's different ways of looking at it. Now, if you already have the graph of it, you could actually use your graph to state the answers of x. Okay, now this is slightly different than the above inequality that has a y in it, but it's pretty much the same exact thing. Uh, let me ask you this, if this were an equation and I told you find the x-intercepts, so what would you do? You would set y equal to zero, right? So imagine that 0 is greater than that quadratic trinomial. And that's exactly what we have down here. We have 0 is greater than that quadratic trinomial. What I'm trying to say is I purposely put, asked you to solve this quadratic trinomial inequality from this graph. This graph represents that guy. Okay? The only difference is that up here we're dealing with x's and y's. Right here we're only dealing with x's. But my point is this. You could actually use the graph to determine your x answers. So what do I mean by you could use a graph to determine your x answers? X answers. You're going to look at that parabola, and you're only going to focus in on the x number line. Everybody pay attention. This is something new, something very important. Right? So just look at the x number line. Now, where are the answers at? Are they in here? Yes. That's why it's highlighted. You shade it in the inside. It's, the answers are in here. Are they out here? No. Are they out here? No. no. So. If I test a point like negative 4, it's not going to work. If I test a point like negative 1, it's going to work. Again, the inequality down here only has x's, does not have a y, which means we're not going to worry about the xy plane. We're just going to look at the x number line and determine where our solutions are at based off of this graph. So it's clear to say that the answers are going to be between this point and this point. Between. It's going to be right here. All of this is the answer on the x number line. Does that make sense? So how would we represent that? We would represent that by putting the smaller number on the left side. That would be negative 3. The bigger number on the right side, the positive 1. x in the middle with the appropriate symbols as a compound inequality, which would be less than symbols. Now, I did not put less than or equal to because this was not a solid parabola. It was a dotted parabola. So does that make sense? If you look at your graph, if you analyze the graph, then you could just look at just your x number line, and you'll tell whether your answers are between these two points or apart from these two points. Like if I would have tested 0, 0, and it wouldn't have worked, I'd be shading in the outside, which would mean that all of the solutions would be on the outside. So you would say x is less than negative 3, and x is greater than 1, with the word or right between it, if that were the case. But right here, the highlight's in between. So just looking at the x number line, you say that it's right here in between negative 3 and 1. So you write it as a compound inequality with x in the middle in between negative 3 and 1. Let's move on to the next one. So again, what I'm trying to say on this section of our notes is that if you take the graph of the quadratic equation, so this is a quadratic inequality. It's not really, um, it's not really a graph because it doesn't say y equals in front or it doesn't say y is greater than or less than. Um, but this does relate to this graph, which is represented right here. So I give you the graph 
so you could state the answers without doing any work. Okay? So the graph is right here. It's obviously shaded on the outside, which means that the answers are on the outside. The answers are definitely not on the inside of the parabola. Now, again, when, you're, when they ask you to solve a quadratic trinomial equation with just x's, no y's, then all you're doing is looking at the x values. Forget about the, the y values. So we're looking at the x number line. So our, our answers, is negative 4 an answer? No. Yes. It's shaded, right? It's shaded. So remember, the shading represents your answers. Is negative 4 an answer on the x? Yes. Is negative 3 an answer on the x? Yes. Is negative 2 an answer on the x? Yes. Negative 1. Zero. No. One. No. Two. No. Three. Yes. yes, right? So we know that if we're just focused, we're not looking at the whole xy plane. We're just looking at the number line, the x number line, because the inequality just has x's. So where are your answers at? You're going to say from here that way and from here that way. And I believe over here on your paper it says to approximate, right? OK, so what would your answer be? It would be, uh, I would say, x is less than 0 0.4, negative 0 0.4, or x is greater than about 2.4. Now, those are approximations. If you wanted the exact decimal value, you'd have to go back to the quadratic trinomial and use the quadratic formula so you could get a rad radical, which would give you a precise irrational decimal. But do we understand how I'm relating the graph so you could just jump to straight to the answers? Question? Let me pause it. Ladies and gentlemen, let's jump to example three. Number three blows people away. All right, this is the graph that is related to this quadratic binomial. If I put y equals x squared plus four, y equals x squared plus four to give me this parabola, if it's an inequality with the y is less than or equal to, you'd be shading in the outside of the parabola. All your answers are on the outside. OK, so this does not have y's, right? So you're not really concerned about the y's. You're just concerned about the x number line and all the x values on it. So are your answers from negative 2 this way, or from negative 4 this way, or from 0 this way? Where are your answers at in terms of the x number line? All of them. So what do we say? x equals all real numbers. Now that, that really confuses people because normally when we graph a parabola and it doesn't cross the x-axis, we say no solution, right? But remember, it's not just the parabola. We're talking about the area because of the inequality. And the area, the shading is all down here, which includes every single x number. So I hope you guys understand that. Now, if you're like, I, I don't buy it, what do you mean all real numbers? If I plug in any x number I want, I could plug in 0, I could plug in 4, I could plug in negative 5, or even negative 20. If I plug in negative 10 right in there, it's going to work. It's going to be a true statement. Negative 10 squared is positive 100, plus 4 is 104, and 104 is definitely greater than or equal to 0. If I plug in 0 on the x, 0 squared is 0, plus 4 is 4, and 4 is definitely greater than or equal to 0. Any x value that I plug in will give me a true statement. That's why the solutions are x equals all real numbers. All right. So there are some steps to stating your answers without actually graphing. But I honestly think if you understand the graphing, it's best to just take your prior knowledge that you already have with regards to the quadratic equation, decide if the parabola opens up or down based on the A, sketch the graph. It doesn't have to be a perfect graph. You sketch the graph. That way, you could uh, state whether your answer is together as a compound inequality with x in the middle or apart. Um, with the word or in between it. So we will be doing step one and step two. Step one is solve it as if it were a regular equation. You could always use a quadratic formula, but you might want to factor, split, and solve. Uh, number two, when you get your answers, plot them on the x-axis. right? Now, number three, instead of testing three different values, I recommend, let's say this, sketch your graph or sketch your parabola. sketch it. That way you could determine whether you're shading the inside of the U-shaped curve or the outside of the U-shaped curve. So again, when you sketch it, it does not have to be precise. It's just a sketch to determine what your a x answers are. So step one says to solve it as if it were an equation. What would you do if this was an equation? That's right. Let's rewrite it x squared minus 5x minus 14 
is equal to, we're pretending it's an equation, it's not really an equation, we're pretending is equal to zero. So now you could use the quadratic formula if you want to, but why not try to factor, split, and solve? So what times what is negative 14, the C value, that if I combine together is my B value of negative 5? Negative 7 and positive 2. Negative 7 and positive 2, that's right. Negative 7 times 2 is negative 14. If I combine it together, it does give me negative 5. This does equal 0 because we pretend that it's an equation. So we're going to split it and solve. x minus 7 equals 0. x plus 2 equals 0. So you're going to have x equals 7 and x equals negative 2. We understand that, right? If it were an equation, we would be done. But it's not an equation. It's an inequality. Okay, so let's think about this. There's an area. You're going to have to imagine a shading. And if that shading is part of the x values on your x number line, then that's where you're going to have to state. So let's do this. Everybody, let's do step two, which is to draw an x axis, an x number line. Now, what are your two answers? Negative 2 and positive 7. Yay? Where would 0 be at? In the middle, somewhere right here, right? Not perfectly in the middle, but definitely the y-axis would be somewhere right there closer to the negative 2 than the 7. So yeah, 0 would be about right here, OK? Now, what kind of parabola is this? Does it open up or down? Up. So this is a horrible, it's, it's, it's a horrible representation of the graph, but it is a sketch. I know that these guys are answers at negative 2 and at 7, right? And I know it's opening up, right? So I know that my parabola, if it's opening up, it's going to be like this with the vertex somewhere down here. So let's just do a sketch. But before we do the sketch, just for the sake of staying uh, consistent, uh, is this going to be a solid parabola or dotted? Solid. Dotted. OK, so just, I mean, it's not even that important when you're sketching. I'm not asking you to graph. But there's your parabola sketched. Now your answers are either going to be on the inside or the outside. How do you figure out whether they're on the inside or the outside? Plug in, Plug in a coordinate. Which coordinate? Zero, zero is the best one. It's right here in the middle. So if it works, you shade in the inside. If it doesn't work, you shade in the outside. So what do I mean by test zero, zero? Just plug in zeros wherever you can on the original equation. So here's an x. Here's an x. Plug in zeros. You're going to get zero. The whole thing is zero is greater than 14. What do you think about that? Is zero greater than 14? No. Zero is definitely not greater than 14. No way. So this is a no-no. That's not an answer. Where are your answers at? Outside. outside. So you could go ahead and get crazy and shade everything on the outside. But then again, this is not an equation that actually has y values. It's not an x, y inequality. It's just an x inequality. So all we're looking at is the x number line. So are there answers in between the negative 2 and the 7? Where are they at? They're on the outside. So your answer has to be separate with the word or. It's going to be here at negative 2, but this way here at 7, but that way. And notice that I'm putting open dots. Why am I putting open dots? Because this is not a solid line underneath the inequality. It's open, OK? So how am I going to write my answer? My answer will be x is less than negative 2 or x is greater than 7. x is less than negative 2 or x is greater than 7. Now, if we would have said the answers are in here, we'd have to put it together as a compound inequality with x in the middle. What do you guys think? So on each one of these, I'm going to ask you to take the skills that you already have to visualize a parabola and then test 0, 0 to see where you're shading, where your answers are at. That way you'll know if your inequality is going to be a compound inequality with x in the middle or uh, a separate inequality with the word or between them. Anyway, number two, what would I do to solve this one? Let's first pretend it's an equation. There's equal 0. Should I use a quadratic formula? No. No. Daniel, what are you going to do? Luzo. Oh, um. Factor. What times what is 2 that if you combine together is negative 3? Uh, neg wait. Yeah, negative 1 and negative 2. Negative 1 and negative 2, that's right. So when you split it, you're going to have x minus 2 equals 0, x minus 1 equals 0. Your two answers will be x equals positive 2 and x equals positive 1. Are you with me? OK, so always solve it. Like if it were an equation, get your two answers. We have our two answers. What's the next step? Sketch it, Sketch it on, the, on an x-axis. 
x number line, okay? So where are these values? Well, one would be right here, two would be over here, right? Where's zero at? Before the one. Before the one. So that's the y axis is going to be over here somewhere, right? Because zero is over here before the one, obviously. Again, it's just a sketch, nowhere near accurate. But we do know that the answers are one and two, which means answers are x intercepts, which means our parabola has to pass through these two points. Is this parabola opening up or down? Up. So we know that the vertex is somewhere down here and it opens up, right? Is it going to be a solid parabola or dotted parabola? Solid. solid, because it does have a solid line underneath the inequality. So this is just a sketch. Go ahead and draw a sketch. It doesn't have to be perfect. Who cares? The reason why we're sketching it is to determine where the answers would be at. Would they be on the inside of the parabola or the outside of the parabola? Then we could determine whether our compound inequality based on just the x number line is together or apart. So what do you say? If I test 0, 0 and it works, I would shade in the outside. If I test 0, 0 and it doesn't work, I shade in, shade in the inside. So when we test 0 here, 0 there, it's going to say 0 plus 2. 2 is less than 0. What do you say? No. 2 is definitely not less than or equal to 0. That's a no-no. No. So this is no. So where are your answers at? Inside. inside. Now you could shade the whole parabola on the inside, but what you really want is just the x number line from here at 1 to here at 2 and just this part. So how are we going to write that as a compound inequality that has an area that's together? You're going to put the x in the middle, the smaller number on the left side, bigger number on the right side with the less than symbols. Now if you do have or equal to's like we do on this original inequality, put the or equal to's on this and you're good to go. The more you practice this, the easier it gets. If you're falling asleep, there's no way you're going to understand this. No way. And there will be a quiz on this Friday, and it's all over the final exam also. Now, numbers 3, 4, and 5 are a little more interesting. Um, let me jump to number 4. Oh, wait. Nah, let's do 3. 3 is a good one, too. All right, so how could I solve this one? Would you use the quadratic formula on this one? No. no. Why not? Because you could factor it pretty easily. What, what does it factor to? Yes. Now let's pretend it's an equation, which means that if we split it, x plus 1 equals 0 and x plus 1 equals 0, that means you're going to get the same answer, x equals negative 1 and x equals negative 1. Okay? So those are our answers. The next step is to go to x number line, the x-axis itself. Let's plot the point. Where's, where's the answer at? Let's just put it right here, negative 1. Where would my 0 be at? to the right after the negative one, right? To the right. So let's make our y-axis be right here. Everybody with me? And of course, this is the origin zero, zero. So let's think about this, guys. A parabola usually crosses the x-axis two times, right? Right here, it's only touching it once. What does that mean? Especially if your a value is one. It's the vertex. It's the vertex, right? The vertex is right here. It's positive one, which means it's opening up, right? So let's just sketch it. It doesn't even matter. Uh, this is going to be a dotted parabola, bless you. bless you, that touches right there. It's opening up. That's a sketch. Now, we need to check and see if our answers are going to be on the inside of this dotted parabola or on the outside of this dotted parabola. How do you do that? Test what? Zero, zero. So plug in zero everywhere. Plug in zero for x's. This whole thing becomes zero. You end up with one is greater than zero. Well, does it work? Yes. yes. One is greater than zero. Yes. So that point on the outside is an answer, right? That means that all of your answers are on the outside of the parabola. Now, if they asked you to graph it, yeah, you would have to graph it and show all these details. But right here, we're just using the graph to determine what our x values are, because there are no y's in this original quadratic trinomial inequality. So is your answer right here at negative 10? Yes, because it's shaded out here. How about at negative 5? Yes, at negative 2, negative, at negative 1. Is it at negative 1? No. No, because it's dotted, right? So it's everywhere but negative 1. So how do we say this answer? <laughs> That's right. X equals all real numbers, but X is not equal to negative 1. So all of this... We're really relying on all your prior knowledge on graphing parabolas and understanding the A value if it opens up, down, uh, and also uh, quadratic formulas, putting everything together here. 
Number four, how would I solve this one? Quadratic. Right here, you have to use a quadratic formula. Why? Because it's not factorable. So let's use a quadratic formula. There's a quadratic formula. Let's replace the variables with parentheses. So your B value is 5. That goes right here and right here. The A value is negative 1. That goes right here and right there. The C value is negative 7. It goes right here. Let's work on the discriminant. 5 squared is 25. And then 4 times 1 times 7, that's 28. But a negative times a negative is a positive times a negative takes you back to a negative. So I really have 25 take away 28, which means I end up with what kind of answers? Imaginary answers, ladies and gentlemen. So at this point, I could just stop right here because this was not a, a quadratic equation that they wanted you to, to solve. This is a quadratic inequality, which is talking about an area of answers, depending on the shading. So just by knowing that there's a negative in here, just stop what you're doing and let's go to a sketch. Here's your x number line. It doesn't matter where you put the y because we know that we have imaginary answers, which means that there's no real answers. Now, where's your parabola going to be at? Is it opening up or down? Yeah. Down. We know it's opening down, which means that it has to be below the x-axis because if it were above, then it would cross at two locations. So it has to be below the x-axis, right? So it doesn't matter where you draw it. It doesn't matter if you draw it right here or over here. As long as you have draw a parabola that's opening down, you'll be good. Now, a sketch of parabola opening down. Um, we need to test the point to see if it's on the inside where the answers are at or on the outside. So let's test what, what value? Zero, zero, which is clearly above, okay, on the outside of the parabola. So if we put zero here, zero there, it all becomes zero. Negative seven is less than or equal to zero. What do you say? Yes, yes negative seven is definitely less than or equal to zero. That's a yes. That's a yes. So your answers are all up here, everywhere, on the outside of that parabola that's opening down. So again, we're not dealing with y values. We're just dealing with the x values, just the x number line. So do you have this as a part of your answer at negative 10? Yes, at negative 9, at negative 5, at 0, 1, 2, 3. So what do we say the answers are? All real numbers. All real numbers. So everybody put that x equals all real numbers. Let's take a look at number five. It's another good one. Again, the only way you could solve this one, you can't factor, split, and solve. You'd have to use a quadratic formula. So jumping right into the quadratic formula, let's put our B value of four right here and right there, the A value of one right here and right there, the C value of five right there at the end. Working it out, exponents first, that's 16. Four times one is four times five is 20 with the minus sign between it. 16 minus 20 is a negative again. Right? It's a negative again. So what we have here is negative 4 plus or minus a square root of negative 4. And you could stop right there. Now, if it were an equation, of course, I would want you to give me the exact imaginary values. But you don't have to do that right here because there are no y values in this inequality. It's just talking about x values. So from here, once you conclude that it's a negative in there, you know you're going to get imaginary answers, which means that there are no real answers, which means that there are no real x-intercepts. So here's your x-axis. Your y could be anywhere because it's not like you actually have answers to plot on your x number line. Does this parabola open up or down? Up. Now, I know that it has to be somewhere up here because if it's imaginary, it doesn't have real x values. It's not like down here. It has to be up here somewhere where it doesn't cross the x-axis because it's imaginary. So you could draw your parabola anywhere you want as long as it's above the x-axis. It's a sketch. Now, your answers are either going to be on the inside of the parabola or on the outside of the parabola. So let's test the point. The easiest point to test is 0, 0. Plug in zeros everywhere. x, x, zeros, everything's 0 here. 5 is less than 0. What do you say? 5 is less than 0. No. no. So this does not work. So where are your answers at? Inside. So if you just focus in on the x values, on the x number line, is negative 10 an answer? No, is negative 5? Is 0? Are any of these answers? No. None. So what's the answer number 5? No solution. No solution. We are going to do a worksheet, guys, that has these very questions on the worksheet. We're going to ask you to graph a couple of them formally, kind of like we did right here, where you get the precise vertex, 
you use your pattern one one two four three nine. You test zero zero. You shade either on the inside or the outside. But the other ones, I want to ask you to solve. But I do want you to sketch the parabolas to determine where your answers are at with regards to the x number line. I hope this video helps.